Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Stacey Bellward, the host of the Connected Families podcast. Welcome to our community. We are people committed to pursuing God's grace and truth for ourselves and then daily working to pass that grace and truth on to our children. I'm so glad that you are here today. Well, today is part two of an episode that we started last week where we were talking about how to have hard conversations with our kids. And today we're going to do a few role plays. So with me again is Josh and Rachel Keller. They are Connected Families Certified Parent Coaches and Youth Pastor and Therapist. Quickly, before I bring them on, I just want to do a tiny teaser, everybody. Next month, in just a couple of weeks, even days, I think, (laughs) we're going to be doing a campaign for discipline that connects with your child's heart. So stay tuned for all of the information that is coming up about that. It's going to be fun. Okay, we are on to part two. Josh and Rachel, welcome again to the podcast. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. We're excited to be here. (laughs) We're going to do role plays today, and that's really fun. But I want to do a little bit of a recap of part one because it's important. Everybody, if you are just jumping in here, go back and listen to the conversation in part one. Because we talked about a lot of really important things, such as what are some keys to think about as I'm entering into a hard conversation with my kids? Long range view of this topic and my child understanding God is in control. He's parenting my child. I want to join him in his work and what he's doing. And, And then just some real basics of... Put your phone in another room or on the table. Don't have it in your back pocket. And then we also talked about the conversation model, which we teach in the course that we've been talking a lot about this month, which is the less arguing, more wisdom, the power of of questions online course. And that model really has four steps. Ask questions, listen, ask more, and then respond. And so we're going to kind of try to follow that model, really practice asking questions in our role plays today. And are you up for it, Josh and Rachel? You ready? Oh, we're ready. As a parent, when do I decide to have these conversations? Like what's the thought around the right time and the right space to invite my child into a conversation? Do you have thoughts about that? I think that environment plays a major role in the productivity that can happen or not happen within a difficult conversation. And I think timing and environment play a major role in the effectiveness of us actually trying to have hard conversations. Yeah, Mm -hmm. our our disposition and our heart space and what we bring into the room, it, it plays a major part. We talked about that last time. But I think where we have this conversation is so important is out on the front lawn tossing a baseball or driving in the car to Dairy Queen to get an ice cream or pup cup for the dog. Like, Mm -hmm. is that, is that the Mm -hmm. right environment? Um, Is sitting on the end of the bed and not looking eye to eye with our kid, but just sitting there and just being at peace while they're laying on their bed, crying in their pillow. Is that the right place to have the conversation? I think you have to experiment. You have to know your kid and what they need in that moment. And sometimes that's difficult to do, but I, I think that, I think that trying to find the right environment in the right time, not letting not finding the right environment or the right time paralyze you, but but finding that in the right time to have the right conversation is super, super important. And so uh, I think that sometimes when we're not sitting at the dinner table looking at each other face to face, I think oftentimes that's the wrong environment to have the conversation in. But I think finding that right environment for you and for your kid is really important even with your body, like most of us are, you know, bigger than our kids, you know, they do a lot of times surpass us as they get older, but just remembering that like fight flight response in our child, if we're having a conversation with our kid and we're standing over them or our voice is louder than them, their little bodies are going to feel threatened. And that's going to take away the opportunity to have that really sweet, intentional teaching, Mm -hmm. you know, opportunity and asking questions and them feeling safe answering the questions. Another sweet thing in play therapy, the ball, when kids play with the ball, it represents relationship. Mm -hmm. 
And so a really cool thing when you're playing catch with your kid is what you're actually communicating to your child is like, here's this thing, it's our relationship or whatever, you know, that ball, and I'm going to throw it to you. And I'm throwing it to you and you get to decide what you're going to do with it. And most of the time, right, the kid tries to catch it. So they catch it. And then you're looking at them and you're going, hey, I'm here. Like I'm here on the other side. I've got eyes here. I've got eyes on you and I'm ready to catch whatever you throw at me. You know, I got it. So that's a really beautiful physical representation of what we want with our kids in having, you know, the hard conversations and asking the question of I'm here, I'm available. My eyes are on you and I'm going to, I'm going to catch whatever you throw my way. And then I'm going to, I'm going to take, and I'm going to throw something back at you and then you get to receive it. And so Mm -hmm. I think sometimes when you're playing catch and you're having conversations, it's a really, it can be a really cool thing because your body's actually experiencing what you're wanting, you know, to have with your kid in that in those moments connection that's baby beautiful. connection no that's right it's <laughs> love connection it. We love it <laughs> i i love that i i remember as my kids started getting you know older maybe seven eight even is when i started it it was hey i want to talk about this thing so in a couple of hours can we meet by the fireplace grab your favorite blanket And we would like snuggle up, not necessarily together, depending on the conversation, (laughs) you know, but we'd have our blankets and we'd be by the fire. And that was a good space. I would also just add to this. You want to choose a time when your child's energy level is at a place where they can receive the conversation that the mood in the house has been lighthearted for some time. Yeah. And so that you're really picking a time where you know your child's at their best yeah. to be able to have a good conversation with you. Good. Okay. Well, we've already predetermined a scenario that we want to do a role play. And so Rachel, you're going to be the six-year-old who's coming into kindergarten and it's maybe the fifth day, maybe it's Friday. (laughs) And so you've gotten through the first week of school and Josh, you're going to be the dad and Rachel, you are just done with school. Like what was this thing? Kindergarten? How in the world is everyone so excited about this kindergarten thing? (laughs) So it's Friday, I guess. And you're Mm -hmm. coming home from school And you're telling dad what you think, because he picked you up from school. So should we pick it up from there, you guys? Let's do it. Okay. Driving in the car on the way home from school. Here we go. I'm buckling my seatbelt. Honey, hey, how was your day today? Stop talking so loud. So, honey, how was your day today? Dad, I said, stop talking so loud. I wonder... What makes you feel like I'm talking so loud? Dad, you're yelling at me. <laughs> so, honey, could we, do you think, you think you'd be up for stopping to pick up some ice cream on the way home? What? Ice cream? Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah. You know, we drive we past Dairy cream. Queen. Love it. <laughs> All right. Well, why don't we just head towards this Dairy Queen? Sound like a good option? Yeah, great. Let's go. Okay. Well, let's do it. Um, let's do it. All right. So, what do you think you want from Dairy Queen, honey? What do you, uh, we're sitting in the drive through. What do you think you'd like today? Anything, anything on the menu. What yes. I like, Dad. <laughs> Did you forget what I like? No, no, no. I know how much you love the Fluffernutter Blizzard. Okay. That is your favorite. So we're definitely not getting a mini this time, sir. We're getting a medium. We're getting a medium Fluffernutter. And uh, I'm just going to get what's your strongest stuff in there, sir. Whatever your strongest is, I'm going to need it for this conversation. (laughs) So perfect. Okay, here's your Fluffernutter. Thanks, Dad. You're welcome. I know how much you love Reese's. So I wonder, I wonder why. I mean, it's it's Friday, right? We've got the weekend in front of us. I wonder why why you're feeling so sad today. I'm never going back to school. Never. I'm not going. Wow, that's a big plan. That's a I hate school. I don't like it. What happened today that made you hate school? Nothing, nothing. Oh, it was Kylie. Oh, Kylie. Kylie. 
So she's the she's the little redhead in class. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Kylie. Yeah, she's new this year. You didn't go to preschool with her. No. Is, is she is she pretty nice? Well, usually Samantha plays with me, but now she didn't even want to play with me. She just wanted to play with Kylie. <laughs> and I and I don't like Kylie, and I'm not going back to school. Never. <laughs> hmm. So tell me about something that happened today that was different than what you expected. Well, um, hmm. I guess Samantha played in preschool and we always played dolls in the dollhouse. And so I thought, you know, today she would want to play. This week she would want to play. And every day I thought, well, maybe tomorrow she'll play. You know, I tried to think, okay, maybe later she will. Maybe later. And she never did, not one time. And now, now she just wants to play with Kylie. And I don't have anyone to play with Yeah, mm. Nobody likes me anymore. That's hard, isn't it? Yeah. Oh. You feel like that maybe since it was the first week of school, maybe Kylie like just needed a real good friend and Samantha is such a good friend. And you even said that she's such a good friend. Do you think maybe Kylie needed a good friend this week? Maybe. Yeah. It's hard though when you need a good friend too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Anytime that you are feeling alone, that feels really sad. And it's okay for you to feel sad when the person that you were hoping would be your friend this week and play with you on the playground didn't. Yeah. Hmm. What do you think would make you want to go back to school on Monday? Um... I don't know. Maybe if I had somebody to play with and I knew I knew they'd want to play with me so I don't feel alone. What are the names of two other girls in your class that you think maybe you would want to be friends with? Um, maybe um, maybe Alyssa. Oh. She seems nice. Yeah, she does. And... I mean, sometimes Addison and I played together when we were in preschool. Maybe Addison would like to play with me. Hmm. And do you remember what Alyssa and Addison like to play? Oh, yeah. They like to play outside, like hide and seek and on the, on the playground. Hmm. And soccer. They love playing soccer. Sometimes, actually, I like playing soccer, too. Um, yeah, it's because you're really good at soccer. Yeah. You've been playing for a couple of years now. Good at soccer. Yeah, you are. Yeah, I like soccer. So, what if we stopped by the store and picked out a new pink and purple soccer ball for you to take to school on Monday? Hmm, I think I'd like that. Mm, and then, what if when you were putting stuff in your cubby in your classroom you showed the soccer ball to Alyssa and Addison and you told them hey I brought my new soccer ball would you like to play with me I guess I could do that at recess I mean I know it's kind of risky right but if you think that those two girls could be friends maybe then what you would find is that maybe Samantha and Kylie would want to come play with you guys Hmm. What do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, I guess I could try it. And if nobody wants to play with me, I guess I'll have my soccer ball. So, I mean, I can play with that too and oh. kick it around. Mm -hmm. So, you okay. sure can. But you know what? You're such a good friend. I know that there are going to be more girls that are going to want to play with you because you are such a good friend. There's so many. You're so kind. You're compassionate. You care about people when they get hurt. You have so many amazing qualities as a little girl that I want to be like. And so I just think the soccer ball, sharing with your friends, and who knows? 
maybe even more people wanting to play soccer with you than you maybe even think right now. Okay, fine. I'll go to school. I'm going on Monday with the new soccer ball. All right. Let's go find the pink and purple soccer yeah. ball right now. You know, I think what a beautiful conversation. And you started off like, oh, emotion. And it takes time, doesn't it, as parents Lots to sit time. in these conversations with our, our kids. But what a beautiful place that you came to. It doesn't always happen that way, does it? In this no. case, I, I felt like it was very realistic to conversations <laughs> I've had with my kids. But let's just debrief for a couple of minutes before we move on to another role play yeah. with an older child and some, you know, maybe disappointment or something like that. So let's just uh, let's debrief. What did you guys think? It is really tough for dads specifically, and some moms, to engage strong emotions. I mean, my default is like, let's go get ice cream, because I really have no idea. Right? <laughs> Give me the hardest stuff you got, Dairy Queen employee. As a dad, sometimes I don't necessarily know always how to deal with it, and it can be really uncomfortable mm -hmm. yeah. for me to try and get to that emotion, because it's and, and tr truthfully, it's kind of painful sometimes to watch your kids oh, yeah. feel those deep emotions and not being able to take them away from them. Mm -hmm. Our daughter, we were talking through, she had a season where she wouldn't share her emotions. She wouldn't say what's going on with her. So we were working really hard at her feeling confident to share her emotions and share what's going on and not to like turtle in and run away. And so she was sitting on the couch one day, just, you know, emotional and I'm so crying and so upset. And I found myself wanting to just make her feel better and make her feel better. And she looked at me and she said, mom, you said that I could have my own emotions and to let me feel them. And that's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> it was a moment for me as a parent going, oh my gosh, yes. Like I want to encourage you, you know, to have your emotion and to, but then I also have to, man I have to manage my own emotion while you are having yours. <laughs> yep which is what you were saying. Yeah, I think that it is hard. We just want to kind of pivot to let's everybody be happy. But sometimes yeah. sitting in that raw emotion is actually what our kids need. And it actually builds resilience in them yeah. where they know that it's okay to feel, you know, any emotion, like no emotion is bad. I think a lot of families probably have seen the movie Inside Out and where sadness is seen as this just eyesore to joy. And by the end of the movie, Joy realizes how important sadness is yeah. um, to Riley's person. I think we yeah. fight that as parents wanting to make our kids happy. I had a conversation with a parent today who was just like, well, I just want my kid to be happy, you know, and, and they're forsaking certain parental decisions that they need to make in order for their kid to be happy. We have to understand that a lot of emotions are good for our kids to feel and to be able to process. And if we can just be patient and sit with our kids in whatever that emotion is. I was at a conference and Rick Warren was speaking, but Rick Warren said that, that after their son had completed suicide, he and his wife, Kay, decided that they were going to just stand with each other in the emotion that they were feeling and not try and talk each other out of that. Mm. And he said, doing that simple thing caused their marriage to grow more in a matter of a couple of years than it did in 30 years before that. And so that same principle with our children is crucial. If we're willing to sit with our kids in their emotion and try and even try and feel what they're feeling, it's going to help us in being able to relate to them and walk them through and coach them through what it, whatever it is that they're going through, whether they yeah. don't want to go to school or whether they never want to date another boy again because their boyfriend dumped them and they hate their guts. I think, Josh, that I saw that as you were walking through the emotion that Rachel felt in her sadness. You weren't trying to tell her not to have it. You weren't trying to give good reasons for it or fix it or just any of that. But I think what I also heard and would like to note is that you were talking to a six-year-old. And so by the end, you did suggest an idea for going forward. Yeah. And I felt like like that was so beautiful and age appropriate because a six-year-old might need an idea. An eight-year-old, maybe it's more appropriate to say, do you have any ideas for how yeah. you could connect with the other kids or yeah. bring more people in? And if they don't have ideas, then say, I have this idea. Let me just, mm -hmm. do you want me to share it? 
you know, and then yes or no. And if they say no, don't. But if they say yes, then share it. Like, what do you think? Do you want to try it? I'm happy to try it with you. So that's just an age appropriate difference, I think, as we're having these conversations with our kids. Yeah, I was going to say parents of the kindergartners and those sweet young ages as you're heading off to school, just remember, you know, that second phase of what's going on in my kid, they're probably tired, exhausted, emotional, there could be a deep reason as to why they're feeling the way that they are, but they honestly just might need sleep and a snack. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. And, and as you are going for ice cream, Josh, <laughs> I was thinking about Lynn Jackson and I was thinking, <laughs> what would Lynn think about going for ice cream? And I was like, well, she might not love the sugar, but she would love from an occupational therapy standpoint, the coldness in your yeah. mouth and this, you know, the spoon <laughs> and the soothing of all of yeah. that. And just how that just, you know, doing that yeah, with mom or dad, body. just sweet yeah. memories of connection also. Yes. So love it. Okay, so we are going to set up our second role play now. Rachel, you're going to be the parent. Josh, you are going to be the 11-year-old son. So tell us, what's the scenario? The scenario is, is that I have tried out for community theater and have failed miserably at getting any role that I ever wanted. I got ensemble, which everyone hates anyway. Nobody just wants to be in the ensemble. And I'm thinking about quitting because that darn director, Darlene, decided to put Jimmy Tate in as as the statue. And okay, I wanted to Josh, tell. is this a real story? I know it's, it's not a real like... story. It's not a real story. No, no. Just <laughs> checking. No, this is a lot of emotion. I You're already in character. I promise. I, I just have. I just hey, Darlene. Darlene, <laughs> director Darlene. So funny. Okay, you guys. All right. Dealing with disappointment and rejection. Perfect. Okay. Hey, honey. How was the play tryout? Well, I pretty much think that I'm done with theater, I think. I pretty much think it's stupid now. And I don't know. I just, uh, like, who wanted to fly a kite anyway? Mary Poppins, they can fly their own kites. Oh, wow. There have been lots of strong emotions about this. Well, I mean, if you did your best, but old director Darlene couldn't see it, how would you feel? Yeah, I'd probably feel pretty disappointed. Is yeah. that how you're feeling? Well, I think that she's just blind. Honestly, she's old. Like, she's probably blind and she couldn't see it. You know, yeah. I have talent and you're feeling like I'm just gonna really need to take it. my talents elsewhere maybe I'll just start my own play company or something yeah this is hard buddy I'm sorry to go as planned you were really hoping for that role well I mean who wouldn't want to be a chimney sweep like is there really the right way to sweep like I feel like you can sweep anyway right you can mm -hmm. sweep anyway and I couldn't I didn't get the chimney sweep, right? I didn't get Bert. I wasn't young enough to play Michael Banks. And I wasn't big enough to be Mr. Banks. And I couldn't stand still enough to be the statue guy. So what role did I have other than being in the ensemble? Mm, yeah. I mean, they can go fly their kites. Uh, you sound pretty upset, buddy. Well... If Darlene would have seen that I was the one, it could have been different. But now it's not. And all my friends are in it. And they got fun roles. And here I am just sitting in our old minivan with no role that I wanted. This is really hard, buddy. Hmm. It is. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. they just don't know what they're missing. So. Yeah. You ready to go home? Yeah, I suppose. I suppose. Might as well. All right. Now I'm taking my hand. I'm putting it on my child's hand and I'm just kind of holding his hand as we're driving home, communicating to him that, hey, I'm here. I'm okay with him being disappointed, having a hard time. So this is where my, um, I know because you can't see what I'm doing. That's why I'm explaining it. 
<laughs> so I'm using my body language to communicate, hey, buddy, you're not alone, even though you feel like it, you feel super rejected, but I'm here with you and I'm going to offer my nervous system because I'm feeling calm before I, you know, say anything else or ask any other questions. I just want my child to know that, hey, I'm with you. I am with you. So here I am being with sweet little Josh, not the statue, the ensemble boy. <laughs> We're driving. Like, do you even care? Do you even care that Darlene, like, chose, she chose it's someone else for all the roles that I wanted? Yeah, I know this is so hard, buddy. I wonder what it's going to be like to be an ensemble person. What do, you, well, what do you get to do? I don't know. You'll have to ask, you'll have to ask Timmy and Micah because they're going to be ensemble. I'm not being ensemble. I'm done with this show. It's not even a show. Well, you were really looking forward well, to it. Well, it is a show, but I can't tell you what kind of show it is because it would be inappropriate. I'm here with you, buddy. I know this is hard. Like you care? It doesn't seem like you really care. I do care. I care a lot, actually. Well, do you feel like you should maybe call her and have a conversation with her because something needs to change in that community theater? Yeah, you would really want me to call. Yeah. You feel like that would feel, you would feel better? Well, I don't know. About the role? I mean, I don't know, because then it would take the role away from someone else, because she already told us who's got the roles. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know if I want to do that, but... What do you think bothers you the most about not getting the role? Well, I mean, I have been listening to the Mary Poppins on Broadway soundtrack for, like, six months since I found out that we were doing this in the community theater. Mm -hmm. I know every song by heart. I know the parts of nearly everyone... Other than ensemble, because who thinks you're going to get ensemble when you're trying out for a play? Like, who thinks that anyway? And so I know it all. And now it's just like, I just wasted all that time. So you're feeling disappointed because you feel like you wasted time. Well, I'm feeling disappointed because I didn't get the role I wanted. I wonder if having the most important role was really what you wanted. Or if being part of the drama maybe was important to you too. Yeah, I'm not, I don't have the greatest voice. So like me just sitting there singing, like that's all that I do. And I mean, you've seen my dance moves. They're not that great. Hmm. I don't know. Were you hoping that this play would really have people like notice you and give you some maybe worth and value? Is that what you were kind of thinking? I don't even know what that means, Mom. I'm 11. Hello. Yeah. I wonder if there's something maybe a little deeper going on, but maybe that's a conversation for another day. Do you feel like you'd want to talk about this again another time? Maybe when you're feeling a little more cooled off? I mean, what would what else would we even talk about? Hmm, well, I'm, I'm kind of curious about the roots of maybe why you're feeling so upset. It is very disappointing not to get the role that you want, especially when you feel like you've worked really hard for it. When mama asked you that question about, you know, why you wanted the role, I thought you maybe wanted to be part of the drama, but you said, no, you just wanted to be the main, the main person in the role, which kind of gives me maybe an idea that you were looking for more than just a role in a play. Well, I couldn't be Mary Poppins, so I couldn't be the main role. Of mama. Yeah. Well, a secondary role then. Yeah. And I know it's disappointing, buddy. It is. What do you think? You want to pick it up another day when you're feeling a little better a little more calm i mean i suppose we should because at the end of the day i kind of want to quit and we're supposed to have rehearsal tomorrow so we probably should have this conversation at some point before then yeah so i'm thinking hmm when we get home we're gonna eat dinner as a family and then do you would, would you want to go on a walk with me we could walk and maybe talk some more about this yeah, uh, could we dream, bring the dog with oh you know he'd love to come sweet yeah. rocket well, I guess so. Okay, that sounds great. Here, we're home. Let's go, buddy. All right, good job, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's not always easy to do role plays. You guys no. really got, you got <laughs> into the role. Yeah, <sighs> just well done. I mean, Rachel, what I saw so much is that you just, you were just okay. Mm -hmm. Just being with him. And however his emotion was coming out. And you never reacted to him taking jabs against the director. <laughs> all of these 
flares, I call them yeah. that, you know, that, that sometimes parents can just be like, be respectful. She's the director yeah. or something like that. Or, you know, she was doing her best or she has yeah. our job. You never, none of that. One thing about kids, a lot of times, you know, boys will blame other people when they're feeling anxious or sad or disappointed. They'll, oh, it's all your fault. It's everybody else's fault. It was everyone else's fault. And girls, a lot of times will internalize with the shame. Like it's all my fault. I can't believe I did that. And I was the worst one at the play and they'll really, you know, so I think it's interesting, even in this, you know, reenactment of a, probably a pretty real scenario that happens that is really common. So yeah. just like for boys who deal with like anxiety or really, you know, rejection, it's to blame. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Josh, how did you feel as you were in the role play? I felt like I was frustrated that she wasn't getting as upset as I was. Mm. Right. Like when I kept saying like, do you even care? Do you even okay. care? Mm-hmm. My car. Right. I think that we want to feel validated in our emotions, but oftentimes that validation to us means that someone gets as mad as we are about something and then actually is willing to do something about that, mm-hmm. you know? And mm. that's not the right answer in those kind of situations. Yeah, maybe having a follow up conversation at some point, but I mean, what's done is done. Like, yeah. There's parts that I wanted, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, and it is yeah. just- Pointing. We gotta let we gotta allow space to feel that. Yeah. And mm-hmm. move through it. Not just like, sorry, let's change the way we're thinking and move on. It's like, let's give it a minute to feel the feels. And I really think in that asking those questions is there's usually something behind it, right? So like the purpose for Josh being in this play was he really wanted the spotlight, which is like, why did he want the spotlight? So that was my question at going looking at like building wisdom and kind of that long-term thing was to acknowledge you know, maybe there's something else going on here that in this conversation, I would have the opportunity to talk about like, where is our true identity found? Is it in playing the, what role did you want? The statue. The chimney sweep, the statue. Or, or it wasn't yes. a fit for the other male roles. <laughs> <laughs> or could our identity be found somewhere else? And then, yeah, we would still be disappointed, but we wouldn't be as devastated because our mm-hmm. identity in a character that we're going to play in a play so then that was the point of allowing some space because when I kind of posed that question about could there be something deeper he was like no what does that even mean it's Mm -hmm. like okay you're not ready to ask those questions about going a little deeper so I want to give you some space to calm down and then in a sweet you know moment on a little walk or when we're moving our bodies in a different way using different parts of our brain we can really engage in a different kind of conversation that says, Hey, like when we're going to talk about our worth and our, our identity, like, you know, could we think of it in this way versus I only value if I'm the main person. Yeah. So that was kind of my thought behind. Yeah. That's good. The The bigger conversation of how did God create us and who are we not dependent on yeah, these circumstances on earth and when we get good yeses or good noes and we deal with disappointment and, you know, what stands sure. And that is that we are loved and created. We are called and capable by the Lord. <laughs> yes. For sure. Yeah. And whether whether a kid doesn't make the, the role that they want in a player, they don't make the team or they make third line in hockey instead of first line or whatever. Mm-hmm continuing to coach our kids on where their worth and identity lie Mm -hmm. um like has a massive role in shaping their worldview yeah and and seeing their who who god's made them to be and what he's made them to do so sweet and as you've modeled in these role plays we've seen how parents then come alongside and say i'm on your team i'm in this with you you're not alone in walking through these hard times of life. That's huge for our kids. They are understood. We're with you in this. And that's the connection that we talk about here at Connected Families all the time so that our kids are even more open to the next time we have a conversation. And maybe that one's even a little bit harder than this one because there could be more at stake or there's grief, deep grief about who knows what, right? Death or 
divorce or any kinds of these hard things that happen in life. Well, Josh and Rachel, thank you so much for being brave and courageous and doing role plays today (laughs) on the podcast. Thanks so much. It was sweet to be here. And we just really hope that more than anything, parents listen to these and go, I'm not alone. Mm -hmm. I, I actually, there are all kinds of people next door to me and across the country road and wherever that are walking through similar things that I'm walking through. And there's a space here, even in the connected families family for me to be able to find other people who are walking through the same thing I'm walking through and we can walk through it together. That's right. Well, thanks for tuning in today, friends. We are a listener supported organization. Over 50,000 parents like you listen to this podcast every month. Individual donations, make the work to equip and encourage families possible. For more information about Connected Families, follow us on Instagram or Facebook or go to connectedfamilies.org. I will see you next time.